So continuing from where we have left, okay, we will do some more numerical sum, simple harmonic motion and uh, uh, pre damped vibration and post vibration, okay. So these are from previous year's question paper, okay, J paper. I have I have two springs okay I have one spring like this and I have one more spring like this I have two strings so a tray of mass 12 kg is supported by two identical springs okay so let us say this is a tray, okay. This is a tray which is being supported by two springs, okay. So you can first consider it as a the suspension system of your car, okay. So the car is being supported at four points near your wheels. You will have some uh, shock absorber. So that shock absorber is nothing but a spring, okay. So we need to understand how does that system behave because well, they are asking a numerical, they have put two springs. You can put four springs also, okay. So, uh, you, are, you have two springs which is supporting a tray of mass, uh, the mass of, uh, is 12, 12 kg, okay. So, your mass is 12 kg, okay. And uh, 12 kg. When the tray is pressed down slightly and then release, it executes SHM, simple arm motion. So you just push this uh, tray a little bit and then you remove your hand. Because it is a, in ideal simple harmonic motion, there is no air resistance, it will start oscillating uh, indefinitely. Okay. So uh, when you do this, they are saying the time period is 1.5 second. Okay. You just Apply a little bit force, remove your hand, it will start oscillating and the time period of oscillation is 1.5 second. 1.5 second. Okay. Then they are asking what is the, like say, let's see, uh, spring constant is K, both things are similar, let us say. Okay. So, um, the spring constant is K, okay, for both the springs. So, just without going into the details of uh, um, the derivation, this I have already explained, this is a, uh, this is a, a parallel system. Okay, so this is a parallel system. So, it will have, this system will have an equivalent uh, stiffness, which is equal to, similar to registers in series. Yes. Okay, so the K is equal to K1 plus K2, and because K1 and K2 are equal, you can write it as K because we want to find out K. Okay. Now, I know T is equal to 2 pi M by K. Okay. This is my equation. Okay. So, uh, I, I know uh, like uh, my time period is equal to 1.5 second. So, in this equation, I know my time period. I know my mass which is 12 kg. So what I have to find is just I have to find out the k. Okay. So that means here t square is equal to 2 pi whole square into m by k. Right. That implies k is equal to 2 pi whole square into m divided by t square. T square. So, uh, I know m is equal to uh, 10 kg, everything is SI unit here, nothing, no need to change any unit here. So, mass is equal to, I can put 12 kg, t square, in place of 1 point, I can put at 1.5 square. So, the, my uh, answer will be, uh, let's say 6.28, right? 3.14 into 2, 6.28 square into mass, my mass is equal to 12 kg, right? 12 kg that divided by 
that divided by my t square which is 1.5 whole square okay so whatever is the answer that is the stiffness of my screen mask system yeah. so why we need to know it because uh, we can you can say that uh, why four spring why two spring actually that is practically that happens okay mm. practically that happens that's why we need to find out the equivalent mm. because suppose i want to find my aim is to find out the natural frequency of this spring mass system okay so when i have a spring mass system like this and uh, when my car is going on the road okay so there will be an external force okay so that external force also force also can have a frequency so this is the natural frequency of this spring mass system but there will be external force which will have some frequency so if frequency of two forces match with each other uh, frequency of the system and frequency of external mm -hmm. force match with each other there will be resonance so to avoid resonance we need to know the natural frequency okay, okay so uh, this is one example of uh, spring mass system so th this is in series there can be a spring mass system which can be uh, this is in parallel and this can be series mm -hmm. you can you can apply a force uh, uh, Air, on two okay. springs in series. Mm. So uh, <clears throat> this here it is in series. Okay, um, and here you know here uh, in series system this F is equal to like say F one plus F two, right? Whatever force you are applying, F is equal to F one plus F two. Okay, but uh, displacements are different. Okay, here. Uh, this spring may be um, like uh, my distance and x two. Huh. Whereas in uh, in electricity, uh, in series system, say like say you have a electrical circuit. Okay, so you have a electrical circuit. You have two resistors here. You have two resistors and you have a voltage and you have some current flowing here. Mm. So uh, here uh, I one. Let us say this is I one and let us say. Uh, let us say through this current passing is I two. So here uh, I is equal to I one is equal to I two. In uh, series, uh, in series current is everywhere same. same. Whereas voltage is not same. V is equal to two voltage drop. V is equal to V one plus V two. Okay. Uh, whereas in spring system it is just the opposite. Opposite of series. Yeah. Okay. So that's the uh, uh, thing like. Here we have two things in uh, you. You have current and voltage. Okay, in spring system you have force and displacement. So the equivalent of current and voltage are force and displacement. So F is the equivalent of voltage, and displacement is the equivalent of current. Okay. So um, um, so that's how you can equate these things. So in this case, what is happening? Because when you are pressing it, both the spring has to displace, get displaced equally, so that uh, displacement is equal to current. Okay. Yeah. So here uh, the current is same because the current is same. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, uh, so it is, it will behave like resistance in series. Yes. Okay. Because the current is same, it will behave like resistance in series. That's why you are adding both the things. Okay, you can derive it also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is uh, one numerical uh, related to spring mass system. How to find the equivalent spring stiffness? Okay. Okay. So. Uh, The, the one uh, the theoretical but uh, trick question. Okay, the, the trick question is when a simple pendulum is moved from earth's surface to deep mine mining, what will happen to the period of oscillation? So the question is when a simple pendulum pendulum is moved from Earth surface to a deep mine, deep mine, 
what will happen to happen to its time period right this is the question okay so this is related to variation of your acceleration due to gravity right so you know if my time period is equal to 2 pi l by g so everything remains same here only thing is changing is g, g. so your t is inversely proportional to square 1 by square root of g okay so you know this is my arc okay so i can have the pendulum here i can have the pendulum here also so when we go um, go uh, outward when we go higher from earth g decreases okay yeah. so when height increases g decreases okay similarly when height decreases also like when i am going inside also then also g, g decreases. decreases g decreases but the magnitude of decrease is different that formula you know okay yeah. but both the cases g decreases so if g decreases so uh, the if g decreases implies time period increases right so the answer is time period will increase okay so uh, if the same question if they ask that somebody takes the pendulum uh, 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 to some more height then also time period will uh, increase okay because in that case also uh, your g will decrease g will decrease okay there can be another question like if you take the pendulum to the surface of the moon okay so you know uh, g on moon is equal to 1 by 6 times g on earth that you know okay that means your there also your g value has decreased so the time period of pendulum on the surface yeah. of the moon will also increase okay and also there is something some questions can be related to if you take the um, uh, pendulum to your equator or, or if you take to the pole what will happen so let us say this is my um, my uh, my earth is circular but it's like a orange kind circular like so you know my earth if so it will be it is kind of orange kind of stuff so this is my this is my equator this is a exaggerated picture okay so i am this is not that uh, that kind of orange you whatever you say so like this let us say this is like this. okay this is my earth right so um, if you see the radius of earth is highest uh, if you see the radius it is highest at the equator okay so i know my value of g acceleration due to gravity is equal to gm by r square right this is my formula so uh, so g is inversely proportional to r square so if the radius if the radius is high then my g value is less yes. okay so uh, if i consider my uh, this my poles okay so here my radius is less only whereas near the equator my radius is high okay so because my radius is less so at pole so at pole g is high ha uh, g is high g is high so if i take uh, my pendulum uh, from equator to pole if g increases then if g increases time period will decrease so those kind of tricky questions also can, can come okay and also uh, you if you are measuring um, a sensitive uh, uh, very costly items like say gold or diamond so if you measure it at uh, uh, at uh, the pole and then you go keep on you start measuring it at equator so you you have to be very careful there because when we measure something it is based on your spring balance okay so if g value is um, say at uh, equator mm. your g value is uh, uh, say less okay yeah. so so that's how you you have to be very careful while measuring because uh, the quantity what we see is is the mass okay yeah. but if you measure it by spring balance uh, the variation of g you have to take care okay so these are some of the tricky questions related to 
um, acceleration due to variation of uh, variation of acceleration due to gravity, which can affect the time period. Okay, clear? Yeah. Okay, you take it. Okay. So these are yeah, some of the means uh, uh, questions where you have to apply your uh, intuition. Okay. Like. Okay. So one question is the time period of a simple bundle of length nine point eight meter is. Okay. So the length is nine point eight meter. So what is the time period? So here you can consider g is equal to 9.8 meter per second square. So it is very simple. Okay. So t is equal to 2 pi. L is 9.8 and this is 9.8. Whatever. Okay. So that this is very simple. Yeah. Okay, so one uh, um, good question is, like say, a body of mass M supported from two springs separately executes simple harmonic motion. During oscillation, the maximum velocity is equal uh, in both uh, cases. Okay, so a body of mass M is uh, so. So uh, this is this is one spring. Okay, so this is one spring. Okay, and I have another spring. Okay. Okay. So I have two springs. So and the mass, both cases, mass is equal to m. Here also mass is equal to m. Okay. But the only thing is that there are two springs. So here it is k1, here it is k2. Okay. Here it is k1 and here it is k2. You have to find the relationship between the stiffnesses. Okay, if the uh, if the uh, mass is the same. Uh, if the maximum velocity is equal in both the cases. So let us say this is case one, this is case two. Okay, and let us say this is V max one. Okay, and this is V max two. two. Okay, so um, it is given that V max one is equal to V max two. two. Mass. Huh. So this we know. So we know velocity is nothing but your omega a, right? Omega a is velocity. Omega square a is acceleration. That is the maximum value. So V max is equal to omega a, uh, a omega a, uh, omega a one, and this is omega a two. Okay. This is the two value and. Uh, Okay, so they are asking what is the ratio of amplitude. Okay, so we know uh, omega that means omega 1 a1, right? Yeah, is equal to omega 2 a2, right? This is um, velocity, uh, maximum velocity, same means omega n a1 is equal to omega 2 a2. a2. So they are asking the ratio of amplitude, uh, ratio of amplitude. One is two. Huh. No, no, I am telling you. So uh, a one by a two we have to find. Okay. 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 So a one by a two is equal to omega two by omega one. Okay. So this omega, omega is equal to uh, uh, m by k. Right. Uh, sorry. Uh, see time period is equal to two pi m by k. Yeah. Okay. Uh, square m by k. Omega so, huh, k so by 2 pi by t is nothing but your omega is equal to k by m, right? So this is my omega. Right. Okay. So this, uh, so this is like say, uh, k one yeah, one. so it will be k k two m two square root, right? K one m divided by k one m one square root. Okay. okay. So now m two and m one are same. So your a one by a two is equal to k2 k1 square root. 
so this is this is there in your uh, answers so uh, so there are answers are like k1 by k2 and uh, k2 by k1 k1 square by k2 square so all these options are there yeah, so this option is the correct one okay Okay, so uh, one uh, numerical on uh, damped vibration. Only one, only one more we will do. Just you have to remember one formula for that. Okay, you have to remember one formula for that. Okay, that is called free damped vibration. Okay, free damped vibration. Okay, so. You know your uh, natural frequency is equal to what we have studied k by m, right? K by. Square root k by m. So this is for a system which does not have any damping. So this is my system; it does not have any damping. But there is another system where you will have some damping. Okay. So how do we show that damping? So you put a spring here. In addition to that, you put some spring mass, kind of some gasket. Okay. So you have this is represented as the damping, okay, and then you have a mass here, okay. So mass in this case, this is, you have a mass and you have a spring k, okay, mm. and in this case you have a uh, spring and you have damping which is represented by b in your book in NCERT books in different book they represent in different uh, uh, different ways in your NCERT book they are telling b as the damping concept. Okay. okay, just remember B. Okay, so um, uh, for a uh, damped harmonic oscillator, your mass is given as two fifty gram. Okay, your mass is given as two fifty gram. Okay, the value of spring constant, damping constant. So your spring constant is given as as uh, eighty five newton per meter. 85 newton per meter okay uh, and uh, your uh, damping constant is given as b is given as 70 gram per second okay okay so 75 gram. What is the period of motion? Okay. So the, this is the question. Okay. So so this is an example of pre-damped vibration. Okay. okay. Uh, see, uh, if it is a uh, it is a, if it is a, there are three types of vibration. One is free vibration. So this is the example of free vibration where there is no damping. So damping in spring mass system is equivalent to friction in your uh, uh, this thing yeah. uh, in your uh, 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 in your uh, uh, motion. Okay, normal motion. So uh, here, if you find try to find out the natural frequency, T is equal to k by m. So it is the angular frequency. Okay, omega n is equal to k by m. Okay. Uh, so but this is a damping so instead of writing it as omega n n means natural frequency d means d substitution means it is damping so here the formula you just have to remember the formula here okay so uh, here the formula is omega d is equal to k by m minus b square by 4m okay 4m 4m square, sorry, k by m, b square by 4m square, square root. Just you have to remember, here you are putting k by m, mm. in case of damping, you just have to put omega d is equal to square root, k by m minus b square by 4m square. So this additional term, just you remember, b square by 4m square, okay. So that will be your 
that will be your uh, uh, damped natural uh, damp damp frequency in free damp vibration. So your frequency will decrease. That's what they will because you are adding a new term there. Your frequency will decrease. Okay. So um, in this case, they uh, you can find out your first term. You can find out your k by m. Okay. So this k by m will be equal to your 85 divided by say you have to convert it into kg. So it will become 0 0.250, which is uh, equal to uh, 340. 340 and because it is uh, frequency it will be uh, second inverse okay so this will become 340 second inverse that is the k by m term yeah but if you b see by uh, so this b square by 4 m square also you can find out so which they have uh, found out to be like you convert uh, this uh, 70 gram hmm. into so this 70 gram you can convert it into 0 0.070 okay 0 0.70 kg per second or whatever, right? Right. So this becomes like 0 0.070 whole square. Okay. Huh. 0 0.070 uh, uh, whole square divided by 4 and then m you know 0.250 whole square. Whole square. So this whole term, this whole term uh, becomes is equal to 0 0.02 second inverse. 0.02 second inverse. So if you compare this term is a huge, this is 340, whereas this is just 0 0.02, very, very very small. So to find out when you have uh, 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 when you have options, you need not go into those detailed complication. You will just find out like k by m and 340 square root whatever it is coming. This will have very little contribution, negligible contribution. So this is just k by m square root. That should be the answer, even if it is a damped, free damped vibration. The contribution of damping to it's natural frequency is very less, and you can find out the nearest number. Okay, so they have in this numerical they have found out the nearest number to be uh, omega uh, time period to be so 0 0.34 second they have. Out, okay, so this is one example of uh, free damped vibration. Okay, then your forced and damped vibration they have not. Uh, uh, goes into those details. Just one theoretical question is being asked. The phenomena that occurs when a frequency of force vibration on an object matches the natural frequency object produces, produces a dramatic increase in amplitude is called. So that is called resonance. I will just explain you what is resonance. See this, I have explained you about free damped vibration. Say, they are asking uh, what is what exactly is resonance okay mm -hmm. so a resonance see you have uh, i have shown you like you have uh, you have a spring okay and you have a this damping okay yeah. you have a damper okay so uh, this damper is nothing but a frictional force okay and uh, you have the mass hanging from the spring mass system so you have a mass okay so now uh, you have one system where you have only a spring huh? and at the end of the spring you have a mass okay so this is one mass here also you have a mass okay so this one omega natural is equal to k by n right that we have found out okay yeah. so uh, and then here we have found out omega d that is the damped frequency so this is this is free vibration this is called free vibration free vibration means what here uh, there is no damping nor any external force why there is no external force because you are just applying something and removing that force yeah. that force is not there in the system you just remove you have just uh, uh, disturbed it and leave, yeah. left it like that so that's why it is free vibration this one is free damped vibration okay so this one this example is free damped vibration vibration so here omega d is equal to k by m minus d square by 4m square whatever we have discussed now so this just you remember so the damping frequency in the free damped vibration there is one additional term which reduces the natural frequency. frequency 
but normally this contribution of this term is very very less so in exam when you find you, if you find this term also that is enough okay yeah, and you can find out in the out of four options what is the nearest value and it can so this is free damp then what is forced damp okay so this forced damp is like say you have a spring okay you have this uh, damper and you have this mass and you are applying a force here you are applying a force this force why it is called forced damped so this is called forced damped vibration this is forced damped vibration so there are three types of vibration one is free one is free damped one is forced damped so this one is the most practical thing okay when we study about vibrations when we design a bridge when we are designing the suspension system of a car or an automobile or whatever those are examples of forced damped vibration okay because your car will be running on a rough road so that because of that roughness of the road there will be one force acting on it so it is in ideal situation there will be some force acting on it so it is not a free case so free we want to find out because we want to know the natural frequency of the system so when a designer designs the uh, suspension system he have to keep the natural frequency away from the forcing frequency see what you are going to face on the road that you cannot avoid you know that this is my design road so i have to design my system in such a way that it is away from the um, uh, forcing frequency yeah. okay so um, the, drive, the driving equation of this system so we know like we, this free body you have studied in your newton's law so uh, what are the forces acting on this mass m so the forces acting is your spring force kx that is the resisting force and there is another force that is damping is the your uh, uh, c uh, damping uh, so normally this is a c into v actually so we write it as uh, the the force is actually damping force is force per unit velocity okay so that is um, velocity okay damp this is called a damping constant and v is your velocity that also gives a force so this is spring force this is spring force this is damping force damping force and uh, and it is it is moving at a acceleration uh, which is a physical to m into a so this is my mass and it is moving at a acceleration a okay so all these things put together is equal to the applied force Understood. okay so i will have three forces one is my kx another is i will write velocity i will write as first derivative of x so that is velocity c into x dot plus i have mass into acceleration so this mass into x double dot so three forces i have acting one is spring spring force or the restoring force another is your damping force damping force and this is your inertia force okay this is your inertia because it is moving at acceleration a a right mm. so this is inertia force e is equal to i am a force acting on it so this force normally it is represented as a sinusoidal force f0 sin omega t normally in most of the things okay so this is the governing equation of a forced damped vibration okay so this force if this becomes equal to zero it will become a uh, free damped vibration because there is no force acting on it yeah. and if uh, so uh, when this uh, term is uh, a f is equal to 0 it becomes a free damped vibration uh, and uh, 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 when you don't have damping you uh, only uh, thing that is uh, acting on it is like this equation you get huh. so when you don't have damping it will become kx plus m x double dot is equal to 0 okay so this is your equation of free free vibration so this is the equation of free vibration yeah okay kx plus m x double dot is equal to 0 is the equation of free vibration 
केक्स प्लस सी एक्स डॉट प्लस एम डॉट एक्स डॉट इज इक्वल टू जीरो इज द इक्वेशन फॉर फ्री डैम्प्ड प्राइवेट फ्री डैम्प्ड नॉट फोर फ्री डैम्प्ड एंड देन केक्स प्लस सी एक्स डॉट प्लस एम एक्स डबल डॉट इज इक्वल टू एफ जीरो साइन ओमेगा टी और एफ वॉट एवर दैट इज दोस्ट वाइब्रेशन होस्ट डैम्प्ड वाइब्रेशन सो दिस इज द मोस्ट जनरल वन ओके यू रिमूव दिस दिस बिकम फ्री डैम्प्ड वाइब्रेशन ए पोस्ट डैम्प्ड वाइब्रेशन एंड इफ यू रिमूव द डैम्पिंग दिस बिकम्स ए फ्री वाइब्रेशन सो इफ यू सॉल्व दिस इक्वेशन दे आर ऑल्सो यू कैन फाइंड आउट द सो हाउ यू फाइंड आउट यूर लाइक एम एक्स डबल डॉट इजिकल टू माइनस के एक्स राइट दट्स वॉट वी गेट फ्रॉम दिस इक्वेशन ओके दैट मीन्स सो एक्स डबल डॉट इजिकल टू माइनस के बाय एम इन टू एक्स राइट सो एंड अगेन आई नो एक्स डबल डॉट इजिकल टू माइनस ओमेगा स्क्वायर इन टू एक्स दैट इज द डिस्प्लेसमेंट दैट मीन्स योर ओमेगा स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू के बाय एम राइट सो ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू स्क्वायर रूट के बाय एम सो दिस इज द इक्वेशन फॉर दिस ऑल्सो वी नो ओमेगा इज इक्वल टू स्क्वायर रूट के बाय एम सो दिस इज फ्रॉम दिस इक्वेशन फ्रॉम फ्री डैम द सिंपलेस्ट फ्री फ्री ऑन डैम्प वाइब्रेशन फ्री वाइब्रेशन वी फाइंड आउट द नेचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी टू बी omega uh, the angular frequency to be omega is equal to square root k by m so omega is equal to k by m is the free vibration okay and when it becomes damped it will become k by m minus b square by 4 m square square okay so these are the things you can take a picture you can just remember these things you don't have to derive okay so now you understand like oh, what are the questions that can come related to simple harmonic motion this is this vibration is a detailed subject okay you cannot at this stage in ncert stage you cannot go deep into uh, um, like uh, forced damped vibration or uh, um, uh, damped vibration it is very difficult to remember all those things only thing you can just remember this in damped vibration this is the thing and uh, what is resonance at all there can be a question okay suppose now uh, the normal question is like when the soldiers are marching on a bridge uh, the force is not that high still why the bridge is collapsing mm. uh, that is because the when the soldiers are marching it, it this marching that is that is why soldiers marching means they have a frequency okay so when the frequency of the marching of the soldiers matches with this bridge will also have a natural frequency if those two match with each other there will be uh, there will be resonance and uh, the amplitude of vibration will be very high that's why so resonance is a very very important uh, characteristic in structural design that's why we should know like what is the natural frequency of the system because whatever external load is acting let us say earthquake or there can be different types of external load we cannot avoid that but we have to design our system in a such a way that the so natural nice. frequency of our system is much far away from the uh, for no, whatever earthquake or whatever this rock Bridge. load whatever you are getting or wind load or whatever so all these uh, you should design your system so that it is away from the forcing frequency that there is no resonance okay okay thank you